Word of the day, discipline. Shalom, this is Brother Bob. You're back here once again. Before I get started, like always, I want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah by Hashem, Rachach Kodash. The ball is to my teachers, the elder apostles of Great Millstone. And Shalom, peace and blessings goes out to the fellow laborers scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, sincerely waiting and enduring until the return of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach to deliver us out of this last captivity. Word of the day, discipline. Um, we went into this word at camp this past Saturday. And um, I just want to expound more on it, man. And um, I'm going to put um, the etymology um, definitions up as like a screenshot for you to see. But um, yeah, discipline. Discipline is something that we didn't learn in the world, all right? As far as, you know, when it comes to spiritual things, all right? Your spiritual well-being. Because the this physical, the carnal, I mean, okay, whoop de doo That lasts for, you know, for a moment, all right? That's temporal. But your real life... All right, who you really are is in the spirit. All right, that's why the scriptures tell us to store up um, our riches in heaven, where the thief can't come and steal, where it doesn't rust and get old. All right, so you you learn discipline in the world. You know you might have played uh, for a sports team, or you might have you know you might have had a strict parent that it taught you um, some form of discipline. But um, discipline, as far as in the spirit, man. You see a lot of these guys that are awakened out of the world to be Hebrew Israelites. Um, they still lack discipline. <laughs> All right. Um, so I, I want to get the first uh, the first precept. I want to go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11. Or do I want to start up? I, I'll, go, I'll go straight to the point. It says, uh, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11. Now, no chastening. For the present seemeth to be joyous. And um and when you go into the definition, the etymology anyways, of um discipline, uh one of the words is to chasten, all right, uh, to chastise, all right, to correct, to punish, all right. That's where you learn discipline, that's where you learn correction. Uh correcting somebody, all right, you you're disciplining them. So it says the Lord tells us, Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Um, you know, now you can apply that to us as um, you know, we're in captivity under these Edomites, these so-called white people, and we're being chastised for breaking that first covenant. All right, we're still in captivity. We still um in these mortal bod bodies that can die, we still get sick. We st or most importantly, you know, we still sin. Against our power, we, we want to we want to be perfect in righteousness, but we still have to endure these things. All right, why? Well, it it goes into what did they just say? Um, it feels grievous at that moment, but nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised there, thereby. And the scriptures clearly tell you, you should know a man by his fruit. All right. Now, when you go into that word "exercise thereby," what what does that mean? Exercise. When you exercise, do you just go to the gym? Or one day out of the week, if you if you if you want to see a significant change within your body, all right, whether it could be putting on muscle or losing fat, if you want to see a significant change, you have to you have to um learn what discipline, but you also have to practice repetition. All right, that's what that's really what exercising is. Like, okay, I use this analogy at camp, but if like if you're a basketball player, well, I don't think I said this at camp, but anyways, if you're a basketball player and you want to get a better jump shot. It, there's something called muscle memory, all right? Your body learns. Like a guy like Stephen Curry, for instance, he he wasn't born shooting like that, but when you shoot every day, all day, and you're working on the fundamentals, all right, your body learns muscle memory, and you're exercising that, all right? Repetition, repetition, repetition. You're getting better and better. So, so when you're being chastised and you're being constantly corrected, all right, and you're learning what to do, what not to do, what to do on the right-hand side, what not to do on the left-hand side, you know how not to go off. You know, you know what to fight now. Cause it's one thing to be in a fight. It's another thing to be in the fight and know what to do in the fight. At least you got a lot of people that's in a fight and don't even know the, who they're fighting. A lot of people don't even know they're in a fight, and they don't know what to do in the fight. You don't know how to counter. All right, when these demons come up on you, all right. We know that the main weapon, right, for the weapon of, of our warfare is not carnal but spiritual. The main weapon we have is these scriptures, the comforter. All right, the counter. Counterattack, the jab, all right? That's how we're going to take down, well, most importantly, that's how we're going to overcome our demons and overcome Esau's wicked rulership, 
all right? And his mark that he's finna bring, his karagma, all right, that he wants to put upon the whole earth. We know how to counter these things through the spirit because we're 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 rep we're um practicing repetition, we're being exercised by the chastening thereof, right? Um hey, the scriptures say what the knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thy time, this knowledge and wisdom that we have been receiving, all right. We've applied repetition by by going over these same topics that build up our faith, that build up um, our trust in in the Lord and and build us up as servants of the Lord. Right? Matter of fact, uh since I'm touching on um knowledge, let me get Proverbs. Proverbs. Let's go to one of the books that touch on knowledge. Uh Proverbs the twenty first chapter, I believe. Uh no, Proverbs twelfth chapter. Proverbs chapter twelve, verse one. Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge, but he that hateth reproof is brutish. Let me get that word brutish real quick. I forgot what it uh means. But yeah, if you love instruction, if you love being corrected when you go off, all right, so that word brutish goes to being stupid, <laughs> right? Same thing as being a fool, but like if you love instruction, right, that means you love knowledge. If you love being corrected, that means you love, you want to know if I'm doing something wrong. Going back to the sports field once again boxing or whatever you know you want to know when you're countering wrong if you, if you you know you want to know why you got hit in the chin you want to know why you wasn't able to slip it fast enough basketball court you want to know why you know your defender was able to steal the ball from you when you did a move that you thought was going to work you know you want to learn you want to be corrected so the next time the same mistake doesn't happen within this truth you want to be corrected when you fall man or you that's why we have um heads of camps that's why we have elders over us right leaders and a lot of these Israelite leaders that um, are in these other camps, really, they never learned discipline in the spirit. Going back to my initial point, they, they never learned discipline, right, in the spirit. Okay, that's why you have, um, hey, the scripture say a child left to himself, right? As a matter of fact, let me get that real quick. You know, um, I can could, I could, I could stay in Proverbs for that. Uh, Proverbs, the 29th chapter, verse 15. It says, the rod and reproof, there's correction again. The rod and reproof give wisdom. But a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. And you look at this guy, uh, the head of uh, the Sakari Alazar. He's a child that's been left to himself. You know, you got these guys that don't, that don't never want to have men over them, right? You leave GMS because you don't like the leadership. You don't like being corrected on things that, you know, was brought to attention that need to be corrected. So you go just start your own thing, which is cool. You, you stay in adoption or whatever. But then you start going off over there, and, and then the elders that you said was over you. What what, what was it, elders? Uh, H H O D C. You when you when they when they discipline when they try to correct you and reprove you, even though they need correction and reproof. But when they try to correct you and reprove you about the uh, the thing you did over the past, all right, we all know you didn't want to accept that. So you said, hey, I'm not on the H O D C no more. That's a child left himself, right? And and that's a very dangerous thing because um. You know, when when you leave a child to themselves, they make their own, own decisions. They have nobody over them correcting them. They feel they can do whatever the fuck they want to do. Um, you know, and when and that leads, to, hey, the scriptures say the blind should lead the blind to a ditch. When you're not being able to be corrected and you can't take correction or reproof and you always feel that you're right, you know, that's a very dangerous space to be in, man. All right? The scriptures clearly tell you knowledge puffeth, puffeth up. So you'll learn these scriptures that you learn from the elders, the men that the Lord set up and you. You know, you set yourself on high, but because you don't have discipline within the spirit, you don't know that um, you, you, you're still supposed to be subject to your teachers and your masters um, that, that you learn is true from. Hey, well, I did. I do remember saying this at camp, at camp, you know, with um, Karate Kid, with Mr. Miyagi, you know, wax on, wax off. You know, um, he, he didn't understand why Mr. Miyagi was teaching him to wax on, wax off. He said, nigga, I want to learn karate. I want to kick some ass. Why are you showing me how to wash a fucking car, wax on? What the fuck is this? But then, you know, he realized, oh, shit, you know, this repetition, you know, this exercise that I've been doing with the wax on, wax off, this is actually a blocking me mechanism when I'm fighting that'll, that'll help me get out of get out of a, a, an attack and strike quicker. I've been, so he learned that through repetition and discipline. But first, the first thing he learned though, was discipline. Because even though the wax on, wax on was a defense tactic, it was actually teaching him discipline first. How to look, look, have patience and sit your ass the fuck down until I'm ready to teach you other things, right? And keep repeating this too until I tell you to stop. Hey, that's, that's discipline, right? He didn't know why he was kept kept on doing it, but he, you know, eventually he didn't buck up to Mister Miyagi. And once he learned the benefits of it, you know, he didn't come back later 
years down the line try to fight Mr. Miyagi with the wax on, wax off. Like, nigga, I'm over you now. You know what I'm saying? Like, he didn't, he wasn't no nigga. Right? He, he, he kept respect for his, um, for his teachers. Um, and going back to that rod, or uh, that rod, that correction that, um, I, I just read about, um, what's, what's my favorite, my favorite scripture? Uh, let's get it. Let's go to Psalms, uh. Let's go to Psalms, the 23rd chapter. Um, and I'm going to go straight to the point. Uh, Psalms, chapter 23, verse 4. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, right, and thy staff comfort me. All right? You, you lean upon the staff. You lean upon these scriptures. You lean upon the Spirit. Lean upon the Lord, which is the Word. And thy rod, all right, that correction, steady getting corrected in the Spirit which is what's going to deliver you in the day of evil, all right? Knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thy time. So the word of the day is discipline, man, discipline. And, um, you know, you got I got these definitions that screenshotted in the etymology uh, as, the, as the picture for this video. And what does it say? A system of rules of conduct or method of practice. And what's the system of rules that we have? Oh, the law, statutes, and commandments that the Lord gave us, right? And if I let me get that in... Um, let me get that in the book of Psalms, right? The Lord gave us something. He didn't give the Moabites. He didn't give the Ammonites, the Edomites, right? the Ishmaelites, the Canaanites. He gave the covenant with his chosen nation, all right? We all know this, man. Um, what is that, Psalms 147? Psalms 147. I always get Psalms 148, 147 uh, mixed up. Okay, yes, this is Psalms chapter 147, uh, verse 19. It says, he showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. So he gave his word, his judgments, his statutes, all right? A system of rules and conduct, a method of practice to the Israelites. So we have something that sets us apart, right? We have something that sets us to be holy, all right? And then we have to practice in these things. We're, hey, the scriptures say what? We're rehearsing the righteous acts, which in turn gives us discipline. So for something, something like the Sabbath, for instance, right, brothers? Got to remember, hey, if you can't remember the Sabbath, hey, put, mark it on your calendar or, or you got these smartphones, put it in your, set a reminder in your in your phone, all right? It's the Sabbath and you'll get that ring on your phone to remind you as even is coming in, all right? It's, it's patterns, it's repetition, man, all right? It, it, it brings on discipline, praying, right? If you don't take time out of your day to pray every day, it ain't going to be a thing that you um, repetitiously repetitiously do. All right, it's, it's going to be something you do every now and then, it's like just like making videos, right? For camp, with camp, for instance, camp is an easy thing to do once you, you know, do it over and over again. It, it becomes second nature because that's just what you do now. You, 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 you've, you've um, been repetitious with that, with going to camp every every weekend, Saturday, Friday, whenever brothers go to camp, right? So you know, you, that's why you got to continue to grow and start to do more because going to camp becomes an easy thing, but what are you doing in your 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 daily spiritual walk with the with the Lord? You know you gotta be practicing, the, you know, repetition and in, in prayer, and studying and reading and putting on these videos and charity and humility, discipline, discipline. That's why you know that's the word discipline. All right. Um, the next definition, the trait of being well behaved. All right, knowing how to act amongst brothers. What and what is that really going to humility? Right, what do the scriptures tell us about humility? Let me uh get a precept on humility real quick, because that's really what that means, uh of uh, being well behaved. Humble, you know, not not being boastful or proudful. All right. And and, and being well behaved within the confines of the law, such the commandments of Yahweh Shemel Shah, conducting yourself as a servant, as you as in the right way, in the right manner. Um da, 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 da. First Peter, that's the perfect one. That's the perfect one. First Peter chapter 5, uh, verse 5. It says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For the most high resisteth, resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. So that's how you be well behaved. Submit yourself to your elders, right? Treat, treat your brother how you want to be treated. Love your brother, right? As you want to be loved, according to the law, love thy neighbor as thyself. Right, which means you ain't gonna break no laws amongst them. Hey, hey that's being well behaved. Oh, the next definition it says training to improve strength or self control. 
That's a good one. All right, because we're in training. All right, we have an inheritance as the sons of of, of God, the sons of Yahshua, all of the sons of Yahweh, right? We have an inheritance. We all the sons. We are gods. The Lord told us we're gods, right? He said, "You are the sons of gods, but you also, but you shall die like the sons of men." All right, but we we're training right now. We're in training to receive our inheritance. So it says training to improve strength or self control. A lot of men like lack self self control, right? Let me get that in First Corinthians chapter nine. A lot of men lack self control, man. They, 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 they come into the truth and they still worship women, chasing after women. They don't know how to uh, control their loins, uh, consuming alcohol to the point where they, where they know that they that it's a limit that they should have, right? But then they get around brothers and drink and they go, go crazy. You, you got to learn discipline. You got to learn. You got to know your limits. You got to learn discipline, man. Right? It's all about discipline. 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 Where is that at all? First Corinthians chapter nine, verse uh <clears throat> we go down to the twenties. First Corinthians chapter nine. First Corinthians chapter nine. Straight to the point, because it talks about self control. First Corinthians chapter nine, verse twenty seven. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So you can't be telling people to come out of darkness. And you're not training yourself to come out of darkness. You're still being that same old nigga, right? You're still being that same old nigga. Uh, I want to get one more precept and wrap it up. Uh, what did that uh, last definition say on uh, discipline that I had? Yeah, the act of discipline, disciplining. And that's what the Lord is doing. He's disciplining his children. He's disciplining his sons, all right? On one hand, because we broke the covenant, okay, we're serving our punishment. We're in captivity. We know that. But he disciplines us every damn day. Right, you may do something you know you did, went off, and you may not get chastised for it the, the same day, but a month later, something happened to you, be happened to you, and you be like, Damn, I can't say I don't deserve it because I'm a sinner and I know I done went off somewhere, so I deserve what I'm going through, right? Uh, let me, let me wrap this up with uh, Revelation chapter 3. Um, the Lord tells us, uh, point, point blank, uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse uh. Uh, verse 19, right? The Lord says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, right? That word chasten is another way of saying discipline, right? As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Let's get that word zealous, man. Because we, 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 that might be the next uh, word of the day. To burn with zeal, heat it, or to boil. Matter of fact, yeah, we ain't gonna go too deep on that. That's gonna be the next word of the day. Uh, yeah, be zealous. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. So be zealous and repent, man. Be zealous and repent. Okay. Uh, and and be, be willing to receive discipline, correction. All right. That's the only way you're gonna grow and 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 be able to be trained properly to receive your inheritance. All right. Can't can't have you can't train no fucking wild dude out here. That's why we're liking a sheep, right? You don't want to be no lone goat. That's 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 headstrong. Don't want to be coached, right? Don't want to be trained properly. That's what the two thirds are, right? They don't want to um, operate between the confines of the of the code that, that the Lord set up for us. These rules, this system, His way, which leads to life and happiness, anyways. But they don't understand that. So yeah, that was the word of the day. Discipline. I hope it was edifying. Until the next time, I say shalom.